Hi there, folks. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. This is Dan Bauer. This is Serve Pro's awesome advent. Uh, if you don't know what that is, that is totally okay. I forgive you. Uh, I'm with a company called Serve Pro the South Towns. You're on our Facebook page right now, looking at this Facebook Live. And what we're trying to do is every single weekday here in December, up until Christmas, you know, Advent, obviously. Uh, trying to make people's lives a little bit better, a little bit brighter, positivityify them, uh, which is a word I just made up, by uh, doing all sorts of different stuff. Really, really fun stuff. Uh, really, really important stuff. We're talking to nonprofits that are working in the community and, and trying to help get the word out about the good work they're doing. We're bringing uh, little nuggets of wisdom, and not for me, like, what do I know? I'm just some dude, but from all sorts of different thinkers and, and personal development people and you know, people who know what they're talking about when they say to be positive, bring that as well. And just some ideas to uh, help keep you on track uh, during these awful, weird times. And I know firsthand, um, if you've noticed, if you're a, a fan of this show here, uh, you've noticed that I'm back in my office for the first time in about a week. There's sort of a... a I don't know if it's a cruel irony or if it's an irony at all. Uh, my English teacher is probably uh, spinning in his grave because I don't know that. But when I started this this series, I had every intention of doing these all you know, from my office, same time every single day. And basically, as soon as I started filming these videos, I got sick. And I was in a pretty bad way. And I don't know if you guys, you know, if you don't know the in-person chipper uh dan bauer then you might not have realized but those first four or five videos i recorded i felt terrible and i was stuck at home locked in my house trying to like work my way through this this fog of not just feeling sick but also feeling very isolated and feeling very disconnected from everything and thankfully i, you know, I got tested i got my test results back at 11 30 p.m last night saying that i'm coronavirus negative and I'm back here at work, and I'm feeling like a million bucks. So brighter, brighter things ahead. But it was a uh, touch and go for a second. So I'm really glad to be back here uh, with everybody. I would love it if you are watching. Shoot me a comment. Let me know that you are watching. Uh, say hey. Say hi. Uh, nice thing about commenting on this that you may or may not know is that if you comment, you are automatically entered into a drawing. Ooh, there's Maria. Maria, I have a I have good news for you, actually. Uh, I, I mentioned you're automatically entered into, into a drawing, and moments before this, and I really should have broken out my prize wheel, but instead I did it online, I drew our winner for last week, and it is, in fact, Maria Wilson. Uh, so, Maria, congratulations. I hope you're getting excited over there. I will give you a call after this to, to figure out how to get you your prize. It's going to be a gift card to a local business, because we are very much into shopping small, keeping things local, supporting our community here at Surf Pro the South Towns. Hey, hey Andrea, uh, so glad you're negative and stayed so positive. I tried my best. It was not easy. Uh, ask my fiance. She gets to see me when I'm not on camera and I'm like dragging around the house like why, like wearing Crocs and, and crying about how I have a cold. I'm very much like, a, what do they call that, man flu? Where, like, I, when a dude gets sick and it's, like, the end of the world, that's me. I'm a big baby about it. So, I appreciate you being so nice. Um, yeah, Maria, I will, uh, I'll contact you and we'll figure out how to get that prize to you. Um, anyway, let's get, let's get to the point here. What are we here to talk about? We're here to be positive. We're here to think big and have some vision for the future. I don't know if you're a big planner, as big affirmation people big visualizers big dreamers whatever um I, I i'm sort of touch and go with that stuff myself but i do enjoy sort of thinking about how to make the most out of the time that we have here on this earth and i try to uh focus myself on that in a very grounded you know not like a, a sort of super out there way but you know i do think about it quite a lot and I appreciate it when other people do. And I actually met a new friend recently who I, I think you all would like. Um, who I've grown pretty close to, spent a lot of time with him. Um, obviously now's not the time to, to make new friends exactly, but 
we managed. Um, his name is Earl Nightingale, and he passed away the year before I was born at the age of 68. Uh, you may have heard of him, maybe not. If you search for him on Spotify, you're going to find all sorts of results. He has 15 uh, quote-unquote albums on there to his name. If you type Earl Nightingale into YouTube, you're going to find all sorts of videos, uh, recordings really of him speaking with views in the millions and millions and millions and people reacting to those videos and making their own. Um, that's not really a surprise to me that there's millions of people talking about this guy because he spent most of his professional career producing tons and tons of content, really a lot of radio shows. Uh, these shows were syndicated internationally. He was all over the place. Uh, he was on over 1,000 radio stations. He was on for more than three decades. He's got that great, like, uh, old-timey, resonant radio voice and delivery that uh, I think, you know, everybody's going to recognize. It sounds like it should be coming out of, like, a big, old-timey stereo in a living room where everybody's drinking Ovaltine. Um, he, Nightingale, he got a nickname that I think he definitely earned. He was the, the Dean of Personal Development, is what they called him. And he, he earned this nickname because his focus was always on uh, making the most out of life. And in all, all sorts of different facets, you know, setting goals, being a good person. He talks a lot about ethics. Um, he synthesizes a lot of really cool, interesting ideas that a lot of us maybe don't have daily exposure to. Like classical philosophy, uh, but also modern research or research that was at least modern when he was recording some of these uh, programs in the 60s, 70s, 80s, whatever. Uh, and also just common sense. Uh, it's stuff that no matter what your age, your background, your education, whatever, you're going to be able to grasp. But it's rooted in, in, in centuries, you know, millennia of human wisdom. Um, and, and, you know, it's sort of surprising hearing him talk and realizing how much of that kind of comes back to the same place. You know, thinkers that are centuries apart in totally different schools of thought and philosophies coming basically to the same sorts of conclusions. Um, I, you know, I talked about, you know, you can Google him, you can YouTube him, whatever. I didn't actually meet uh, Earl here through the internet. I was not actually even familiar with his radio work. I didn't know who he is. I thought he had a cool name. It was sort of the random suggestion of a friend who said, you know, go go check this guy out. You might like him. Go on Spotify or YouTube and look for his program called Direct Line. Um, he, that's where... You know, uh, you know, Nightingale's a lot of stuff where he talks about specific topics. Direct Line is a very direct one where he just talks about man's journey to find meaning and success in life. Um, it's like catnip to me. And so I started listening to Direct Line, and it turned out to be something that I listen to every single morning now as I'm going about my, my kooky little morning routine where I'm trying to, to figure my life out, uh, you know, one 60-second plank at a time, which sounds sad. Uh, not an athlete. Uh, I wish when I was in school that I had been, been listening to this because I get something out of it every single time. And especially in school, I was like kind of a brat and I you know, thought I knew everything and I was rebellious in ways that I will not get into here um, for fear of everybody realizing what a rotten little kid I was. But if, if I had learned any of this in school, if I had learned about the importance of, of ethics and, and success and goal setting and all these things for having a vision for your life, I think I would have been a different person. Um, or at least I would have had a head start on being the person that I'm hopefully becoming today. Um, so direct line, anyway. There's one episode in particular that I wanted to share Earl's, uh, Earl's thoughts on because I, I like this. It just sort of brought a smile to my face. And, and really stuck with me because it's such a simple but you know powerful metaphor. Um, and, and he brings in all sorts of uh, classical philosophy to, to underpin it, but it's really just like a very elegant image. Uh, he talks about, Earl talks about his love of ships as, as a kid. And from boyhood, he, he really delighted, he, was, he lived near a port and he, he grew up relatively poor. And he really delighted in going to the port and just sitting there and watching the ships come in and go out and get unloaded and reloaded. And he, it, it, you know, it delighted something very deep down in him, and he could never really put his finger on what it was. And it wasn't just the fact that he was looking at these huge, enormous operations, these big machines, and getting wild by that. I mean, I'm sure that was a part of it. What kid doesn't like to see, like, a bulldozer going by? But 
there's something deeper because what he really liked was going up in the uh, captain's sort of quarters where they navigate the ship and really thinking about the navigation element. And he realizes later, this is why he was fascinated. He's well in the middle age when he realizes this. Ships operate their entire lives the way that we should operate our entire lives. Ships operate the way that we should. But few of us actually do. Um, and I had never thought about this, but and these are Nightingale's words, but at any given moment, a ship is 100% successful. Which is the, the line I like. A ship is 100% successful 100% of the time. Uh, that means that it's either sailing to some predetermined port of call or it's in port and it's getting ready to sail to the next one. That's it. Um, and, you know, a ship owner is smart in a way that, like, few of us are in our lives. He knows that his ship can only really reach one port of call at a time, right? He's never, there's never doubt or confusion about the way he's going or what he's doing. If you go up to the navigation bridge of a huge ship and you ask the captain where he's going, he'll tell you instantly, he'll tell you in one sentence exactly what he's trying to accomplish at that moment and where he's headed. How many people do you know that can do the same thing? Can you do the same thing? If somebody asks you where you're going in life, heck, if they ask you where you're going today, where you're going in the next three hours, what you're trying to accomplish, could you tell them simply like that exactly what's going on? Most people, and again, I'm quoting Nightingale directly here, uh, they want so many different things. And a lot of those things they're not actually that sure of. And his example is sort of cartoonish. They're like the guy who jumps on his horse and tries to ride off in all directions at once. It's just, it's impossible. You get stretched so thin and you never accomplish anything. Uh, what people ought to do is recognize the truth and success of a ship. You pick one port that's important, you sail to it, you rest and refit, you, you get ready, and you pick another port and you sail on your next journey. That way you reach your most important goals one by one until you've got this tremendous pile of accomplishments in front of you just because you've had that level of focus. You get all the things that you want, all the things that you can be proud of. And we talked about this on a previous video, all the things that do you mean that you can be proud of the life that you're living and that you're living a significant life simply by realizing that you can only really do things well one thing at a time. Um, and this is why a ship is 100% successful at any given moment because just by definition, it can only do one thing at a time. It can only head to one port. It can only have one journey going at any time. And a ship captain knows exactly what that journey is. I like this a lot because I am admittedly a pretty scatterbrained and sometimes anxious person in terms of figuring out what it is that I should be doing. Um, I'm always wondering if I could be doing more or should be doing more or should I be doing something differently? There's always that, you know, devil on my shoulder saying, you know, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? Um, is this really the best use of your time? So this metaphor really appealed to me for that reason. Because I needed to be reminded, and I need to be reminded all the time, that the best way forward, the, the example of the ship, is to pick a goal and focus on that goal and achieve that goal. Pick one thing at a time. You can only do one thing at a time. You're only really capable of thinking about one thing at a time. Our focus, our attention is so limited. Our energy is so limited. And the amount of things most of us want to accomplish is huge. It's insurmountable. And we want to do everything at once, and it just is not happening. And of course, our lives are radically different from uh, the lives of ships, especially now. You know, Nightingale probably wrote that in the 60s or 70s. He, uh, he did not have a sense of the demands that life makes of us now. On one hand, we're all now stuck at home. Our options are limited in terms of what we think we have come accomplished or at least we, we sometimes feel that way i don't know if that's always true at the same time our attention is at a bigger premium than ever uh, we have cell phones in our pocket ringing off the hook mine just went off because i forgot to uh silence it and who knows what that is um we've got the internet we've we can always be working we can always be doing something there's this pressure to constantly optimize our lives and and use our free time and all these 
ridiculous little ways. I talked in a previous video about all these like language learning apps that promise that you can learn Spanish, you know, while you're walking to work or something or sitting on the bus in just those few minutes of downtime. And that's sort of a toxic promise in the sense that it's, you know, the three minutes of, of relaxation that you have or that you're not doing anything, you're, you feel this demand from somewhere else to, to use those in ways that, you know, maybe aren't that important to you. Um, Earl Nightingale didn't know any of that, but that fact only makes his, his uh, message a little bit more resonant. Uh, knowing that there's so many demands on our attention that if we're just going by default, are going to absolutely consume us and absolutely chew us up and spit us back out because we just keep saying yes to everything and doing whatever's in our immediate vision... Um, it, it, that's not going to help us live the life we want to. We have to still be, if anything, more intentional about setting goals and achieving them with some level of single-mindedness and focus because we can only do things well one thing at a time. So maybe we're never going to achieve that 100% success rate of the sailing ship that is always headed beeline directly for where it needs to be, and that's fine. We're only human. There, our lives are a lot more complicated than ships, but we do, I think, all have untapped reserves inside of us of focus and of ambition. We have goals. We have vision if we can dig down and really acknowledge that vision. And being very intentional and to steal like a pirate term, a little bit cutthroat about what you do and do not do or what you say yes to, what your goals are, I think is, is a really invaluable skill to develop, especially now when we are constantly, hi, hey, Dave. Good to see you. You made it. Um, we're talking about ships. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it, it's it's vitally important to know that there's so many demands in our attention that we are very intentional about setting our goals. So my ask for anybody watching this today is this. what are What's your port of call? Where are you headed? What are your goals? What do you want to achieve? And how are you working towards those goals? For me, I, I'm looking down the barrel of doing 20 more of these videos. I'd like to do that and do that as well as I possibly can. And there's also 9,000 other things on my mind right now, but let's focus on that. And I'm going to do my best because I'm certainly not perfect at this. Frankly, I would say I'm not that good at it. It's, it's a lesson I'm learning. Uh, but that's what I'm going to be thinking about today. And I'd love to know what you're working on. So leave me a comment. Again, if you comment, you will be entered into a drawing at the end of the week. And congratulations to Maria, our winner this week. Uh, Maria, if you're still watching, I'll give you a call after this and we'll figure out how to get you your prize. Um, until next time, thank you for joining me. This has been Serve Pro's awesome advent. And if you're just joining the tail end here, every weekday until... Christmas, the 25th of December, we are going to be going live at 10, 10 a.m., injecting a little positivity into people's lives. Uh, one silly little lesson about ships at a time. Uh, leave a comment for a couple of reasons. Again, you can be entered in the drawing, but also if there are nonprofits, charities, philanthropies that you think are really important, doing important work right now, I'd love to feature them here. And this doesn't just go out on Facebook. This goes out to our email list as well, which is fairly large, so it's it's a good group of people to get in front of. So if there are nonprofits that you think deserve to be spotlighted, let me know. Put that in the comments. I'm also going to put my cell in the comments. Text me if you want to get reminders before we go live. I'll put a form in the comments, so if you want to give me your email privately, uh, I can send you an email before you go live. Uh, or I go live. We go live together, I guess, hopefully. Uh, yeah, I'm going to wrap this up for now. We're at about 20 minutes. Um, Maria, Andrea, Dave, anybody else who's watching, thank you for joining. If you're watching this, please leave a comment. Let me know. I'm not alone in this universe. I'm not a solitary ship sailing God knows where. Uh, and I'll see you guys tomorrow, 10, 10 a.m., bright and relatively early. See ya.